Mr. Murthy has initiated the cyber security services in CDAV and played the key role in achieving CERT in impaneled for CDEC during the period of 2013-14 and leading the audit and assessment teams at CDEC. Mr. Murthy is involved in designing, developing and uh, develop, uh, development of IT, ICT and cyber projects with DRDO, RCI, IICT, University of Hyderabad, NGRI, Manage, NIRD. He is instrumental in designing, developing secured architectures for protocol analysis, incident and network monitoring for critical infrastructure and strategic purposes. He is also instrumental in establishing the national labs like ISEA, NDC, RTC, labs for capacity and capability building activities in information security. Mr. Murthy lead the cybersecurity audit and assessment activities for 30 organizations and more than 500 applications. So I'm thankful to the expert, uh, Mr. Murthy ji, that he has spared the time for ending the session and expert talk on the topic, essence of proactive cybersecurity. So sir, I'm thankful to you for sparing the time. Now, sir, you can continue your expert talk. Please. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, giving an, a long uh, thing about me. But however, uh, I thank uh, you all uh, for giving this opportunity to interact with the uh, various faculty and uh, engineering students. Or, uh, so this talk today, which I'm planning to discuss about proactive security, uh, cyber security framework for teaming exercise, so, hope uh, my screen is visible to you all. Yes, sir, this is visible. Yeah, thank you. So, I'm shifting to three different slides. Maybe uh, you may have some kind of a disturbance in shifting, but anyway, so these are the, I feel that important uh, to you, maybe uh, some of the people may. See, the world, if you look into that, uh, this is itself, uh, you can, from this slide itself, you can understand. Hey, listen to this, World War Three will be a global information war with no division between civilian and military participation. So this is what uh, some girl is telling about by reading novel or by reading the uh, uh, that uh, particular po uh, line in the particular novel, McLuhan, our culture is our business. But at the same time, the guy who is caught up uh, as a civilian, he is running in a predator drone app. So that is itself tomorrow's telling about uh, tomorrow's war. It's not uh, kind of in a, any a physical war between two countries and all. It's maybe uh, the war could be a kind of an, a, a cyber war. And already maybe whether you know or not know, we are seeing a lot of newspapers, how China and uh, um, Pakistan are, even though you take in the world also between uh, South Korea, North Korea, Russia and the US, these things are already happening. And the most people who are within and who are part of with us, maybe the army, part of army. Recently on Australian news, paper is telling about every important place, every important organization, every corporate organization, there is a Chinese Liberation Army uh, members are already as a trusted members has joined. And China has started as long back, uh, almost uh, the 15, 20 years back itself, this kind of things, so that to become as a most powerful nation in, in the world. So that is where the tactics are happening. Uh, so that is what my initial remark in this. So the how cyber war is important. So we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So that is what human engineering is, how much important. And uh, as you know already, the humans are uh, how much they are target whether it could be a part of a, a financial benefit or 
national perspective national uh, intelligence perspective so that humans are all now target rather than corporates where the corporates are uh, uh, be part of uh, corporates are because do business that is the economy of a country so when something is there so that they uh, all the information would be useful so the information war is going on so main topics for information war is network centric information warfare operations and related technology why i am showing these slides is basically is so why we required for proactively act needs to be work out uh, for cyber security so that's what we will uh, uh, i'm going through these slides i don't want to explain because my main uh, scope of the uh, today's uh, lecture is uh, proactive security but before going to the proactive security so we should know these terms that's what i may be running a little bit faster so information warfare is a everyone concern worldwide i am here see my name is so and so so i am doing this job this information is very critical if somebody wanted to hack my organization let's take example you have an a gmail id let's say i am seeing some names here kausho datta so kausho datta may be having a some kind of an a mail gmail dot so kausho da dot datta as gmail dot com itself is telling the name of a, who is that kausho datta of course if i search some social engineering etc kausho datta is working so and so organization and if i am going further into facebook and all cause the the has a, having this family names with so and so so children are doing so and so 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 then what is that i required this information is very much important to hack him or to target him because what kind of passwords he will keep the he may be keeping cause of cause of at 123 cause of that or that the family or maybe he is believing some god the god name these are the only passwords so that weakness could be also reason for uh, having somebody understanding about your activity so but this information also helps cyber warfare that is where china other countries or their opposite other whom ever competitive countries or uh, because of the threat intelligence they were keeping such kind of an uh, information sharing information and getting the information as australian newspaper told that so every information would be passed if trusted members or respective members are there the beauty of that uh, china is thing is that the members can talk to directly their president of china so that is where the president of clp uh, so that so the way how they are much important uh, for that particular thing of course there is a offense thing defensive things are also there electronic warfare information distortion the information so maybe uh, the information something is happening if i am saying that the corona virus is maybe kills 5 lakh people in march uh, everybody is worried uh, like 5 lakh people so but however they were taken some control so in such a way that we survived but if you look into the yes still there but the information how you are passing is also it could be sometimes disinformation or somebody distorted and that can be delivered also so we, i am leaving some of the slides in between not to worry about that as they are not scope so but cyber war is basically non human nature but uh, if you look into that how it is growing uh, if ai cyber systems which you are looking into this way and uh, how humans engagement created by our combatants so this is slowly is going in a singularity man engagement so cyber war is nothing but cyber space is war fighting domain so as everybody believe that after land air water space would be become as the fourth uh, space for wars where but uh, because of the the technology evolution cyber things came as an a fourth it doesn't mean that uh, space is not a warfare kind of an a uh, platform but cyber warfare became as an a fourth because of the the popularity and involving of the 
all civilians also because mostly civilians are using this technology so they can use they can use civilians also to fight with countries so the fba reported in 2007 there were 108 countries with a dedicated cyber attack organization seeking industrial secrets the warfare is not only between two countries it could be between two industry organizations where they want to get the secrets and if you see that india second worst victim of cyber crime and in air indian air force sukai 30 fighter aircraft was downed purportedly by cyber attack from china in 2017 whether news is correct or not we will keep it afterwards but uh, uh, this indian indian defense review.com this is where this uh, came so national security council secretary almost 35% of cyber attacks were attributed to china so and if you look into the government departments that have come under repeated attacks the first one is pmo office ministry of external affairs indo tibetan border police defense research and development organization these are the some of the few organizations are have come under repeated attacks and uh, it refers to the use of digital act like computer viruses hacking by one country to disrupt the vital computer systems of another with the aim of creating damage death and uh, destruction where creating such kind of an uh, damage death and destruction also comes part of uh, uh, cyber terrorism because terror in creating terror itself in the name of death damage and destruction is under comes and cyber security uh, cyber of terrorism so basically there are three varieties of uh, people the black hats white hats and uh, pre net jni net who areas in cyberspace inflated by in, infested by hackers to pursue illegal activities like uh, uh, dark web or dark net see the most skilled vulnerable resources in the world now available with china very capable at command and control networks so that they continuously try to uh, command and control you thing and uh, basically their objective is still to intellectual property information warfare is a tool of war as a way to achieve victory without war as a means enhance the stability at the time so this is where uh, they china is working on uh, gulf war is often said to be the turning point for china realized that the need for deep reforms of its military So in 1993, China changed its military strategic guideline to winning local wars in condition of modern technology, particularly high technology. When the technology 1993 itself, they were started this kind of activities, and uh, the capabilities. If you are looking at that, the science of military strategy, a document study by Academy of Military Science, was first time that Chinese military publicly addressed cyber warfare from holistic point of view. but also modified the basic aim for preparation for military struggle to winning information local wars so what does mean might be you already know that what they do with hong kong what they are trying to do with taiwan and what they do with uh, uh, in the south uh, uh, is china sea uh, that whatever that they were trying to occupy so that is where the strategy started uh their main goal is the with respect to india was to gain access to sensitive information from the government and the private sector the chinese use of stuxnet worm also is the stuxnet worm is in 2011 12 uh, to compromise india's communication satellite which this news came to indian defense review.com and what is exactly how china is doing this proactively uh, to secure this so their product they may be collecting a lot of data to be part of proactively looking into the future so the first apt one apt in the sense advanced persistent threat one that means you use threats and technologies in such a way that you can persistently stay there and collect as much as information they were established in unit 61398 warfare is believed to be the second bureau of people's liberation army general staff departments and it is the third department which is most commonly known by its military unit cover designator as unit 61398 so this is a, a 
was released in those days in 2011, China's economic espionage has reached to intolerable level and uh, believe that the United States and uh, their allies in Europe and have Asia have an obligation to confront Beijing and demand that they put a stop to this piracy. But the Chinese Defense Ministry is saying it is unprofessional and groundless to accuse the Chinese military of launching cyber attacks without any conclusive information. Because Beijing is uh, waging a massive trade war on US all. And we, uh, that is where US represent Mike uh, August on October 2011 said. But coming to the unit 61398, so they systematically stolen hundreds of terabytes of data from at least 141 organization. So when you are talking opposite to the China, you are saying stolen. But when you are talking on behalf of China, they were, that is the strategy that was taken as part of proactively to get in a kind of an information of other countries to secure their boundaries, secure their space. APD1 focuses on compromising organizations across broad range of industries in English speaking countries. They were targeted mostly in that APD1 English speaking countries like US and some of the countries in Europe. See, they, as it named, as it uh, APT1, persistent threat, it maintains as much as extensive infrastructure of computer systems around the world. And in overall, 97% of it is observed that APT1 introduced connecting to their attack infrastructure and user IP addresses registered in Sangha and systems that use the simplified Chinese language. So, some people, anybody tracking, it is showing that Chinese, simplified Chinese language and registered in Sangha system. See, whether you believe it or not, size of AP2N's infrastructure is implies a large organization with at least dozens, but potentially hundreds of human operators. And uh, these human operators working under this total communist part of China, PLA General Stop Department under this GSC third department, it is established as a second bureau unit. Like uh, there may be a, such kind of bureau units are there 12 to 15. So what is exactly personal requirement to where they were working in that uh, such kind of organization and establishment? They should be very well versed with covert communication. An article in Chinese Economic Journal, second author L. Bingan, references Unit 6139 as the source of his expertise on the topic. That is where we are able to understand the covert communication is happened by doing this organization. Of course, they have to learn, understand English linguistics because they are mostly targeted English speaking countries. So the information which they are getting should be evaluated, analyzed for the use of their purpose. And they are also learning operating system internals. So this is very much important who would like to come to cybersecurity area. So they understand operating system internals. They can understand very easily about oper operating system uh, uh, details, uh, like vulnerabilities, so that they can easily, when they are, uh, if this is that their security purpose, they can protect their uh, organization uh, operating system. When they are attacking, if they know about the operating system vulnerabilities, they can easily attack. Then second one, digital signal processing subject, uh, they should have, because the, the same Chinese academic journal, Peng Fi reference unit 6139 as the source of his expertise on this topic. So they are also teaching about a digital signal processing uh, to understand various uh, communications between these computers and cyber devices. And of course, network security is required. The third, uh, because they are working towards uh, understanding various network security infrastructure. So always they also required some other proficiency, professional code, circuits and system, information and communication engineering, where under the circuit and system, they understand about the political, English, mathematics, signal and digital circuits. Uh, and eight uh, other subjects like uh, information communication engineering, may definitely mathematics and uh, the signal circuit basics. So this is what basically the requirements to join such kind of an organization and base that the fundamentals are required very much strongly to do this such kind of covert 
or non covert communication the evidence that collected mandate collected on field unit 6139 in mission the employees hundreds perhaps thousands of personnel and uh, that whatever the subjects we discussed in the previous slide that they should have large scale infrastructure and facilities in the pudang area of sangor and the telecom in the name of national defense so that uh, they are all doing collecting the critical information across the globe based on the national defense mechanisms and strategies so that uh, years of espionage apt1 pushed the president in apt if you looking into that they were targeted mostly one one by united states from 2007 to 2014 canada to france one india also three longest time period within which apt1 has continued to access victim network four years, 10 months. They are able to maintain that kind of command and control on particular network four years, 10 months, where that particular organization does not able to identify that Chinese intrusion. And what are the kind of targets industry? In the mostly they were targeted information technology, of course, entire year but started with the information technology companies transportation high-tech electronics to construction and manufacturing aerospace public administration they didn't leave anything they were trying to get into that each and every domain so that is where the same slide so broad range of information from the its victims is not only command and control system they use it to collect the data as much as so let's take example uh, whether you believe it or not largest apt1 data theft from a single organization is 6.5 terabytes over 10 months they are able to collect the information from that organization about in a 6.5 terabytes data where that organization didn't able to find such kind of information. So who would be the behind first APT1 hacker probably? Ugly Gorilla is name, the hacker name, but actually is Wang Dong, Professor Jang. APT1 hacker profile Dota is Mike Kyung, super hard. So these are the people who started. And if you're looking into this, Initial recognitions, initial compromisation. Recognitions is basically collecting the information gathering. And uh, even though whether you wanted to confirm that whatever the gather information is right or not, you may do some scanning, you may confirm with that uh, with the various different sources, like scanning techniques and all together. Information gathering plus scanning techniques is, doesn't mean that initial recon and once they have taken entire footprint of blueprint of your organization then only they will start getting into your organization the blueprint of the organization can happen within the re recognitions and initial recognitions then they try to a kind of initial compromises and establishing a foothold then slowly escalating the privileges then after getting into the one system, there they will do the further remaining recognitions and more laterally maintain presence and complete mission. This is the what the thought they generally do that and continuously initial recognition is what the example file names include military economic, a spear missing phishing email with attachment. Spear phishing is in a mostly targeted high high-end users, like in a corporate, you take it, and a corporate CEO, corporate CTO, if you attack, that would be there. So they will send an example with updated office contact version one JIP, and could be used for targets for in any industry. On some occasions, unsuspecting email recipients have replied to the spare phishing message, believing that they were communicating within a business for a business purpose. In one case of person replied, I'm not sure of this legit. This is legit, so I didn't open it. Within 20 minutes, someone in APT1 responded, a test email back is legit. Once it said they're legit, so you may be opened. 
okay thanks that is where uh, by mentioning and you may be opening that file that would be enough so similarly you may get like a imply benefit and overhead adjustment keys dot pdf so definitely you will open it am i right so then establishing a foothold what is exactly establishing a foothold the global distribution this uh, basically will try to c2 is means command and control so if you look into that the ap8 and malware families these are the families are used initially they started this activities 2004 but more they were started with 2007 next to 3 years 4 years they established all kinds of requirements and working towards that particular thing and started this so what is the great rival of china if you look into that all what are the websites and what kind of the apt1 zone registration different different bluecote.com for as many as micro duplicate zones created the great firewall is the term used to describe the various technical methods used by the chinese government to censor and block off or restrict access to internet services and content that the government considers sensitive and are in, inappropriate inappropriate content ranges from pornography to political dissent and from social media to new sites that may portray china or chinese officials in a negative light the great firewall uses various methods such as the blocking particular ip addresses of rate limiting or resetting the ip connection so all kinds of dns uh, uh, wherever they want to control, control they can control it so the tools they were used are like a cache dump hg dump gsec dump so obtain password access from the windows registry including the sam file cache domain credentials and ls secret ls ls as dump active login session password access from the la ls access process mimic as pass the as toolkit pw dump 7 pwx all these tools would be used as part of this and their mission area steals intellectual property from english speaking organization target strategic emerging interest identified in chinese called five year plan and uh, they may be conducting all computer network operations against english speaking guys then ttps nine tools tactics and procedures the organized funded disciplined operators with specific targeting objectives like in a conducting military grade computer network operations so it is uh, that is where we recommend every organization should design even the your college could have established as part of cyber security this cyber exercises platform which we will discuss in soon within the my lecture itself so expertise of personal in, and what they were recruited ap1 is as directly observed but reported english language requirements operating system internals location infrastructure so you need to be recommended to audit your devices in similar way because you don't know whether your organization is hacked or not because nowadays if you hacks it's not like that you are down nobody no intelligent hacker or no uh, what you can say that anything they want to continually uh, be part of like a command and control it never make you down he will only listen to you listen to your business listen to you what exactly you are sharing what you are within a private persons what you do like in a monitoring you so that whenever i getting an opportunity so that i can hit you so it always should be audited your regularly on yearly basis preferably if you can do if you are a critical part every six months you have to do it and you have to establish computer security incident and response team across all centers iso cso supply the technical teams which should continuously evolve in the team and recommended and moreover you need to do enable log event management this is one of the proactive securities important enabling logging event management continuously because when you are enabled hacker goes on step back if i enter into any log can identify me that is what backstab 
so that la attacker always tries to disable your logging things and hitting your logging things is first so that how to avoid all these logging mechanisms to get into your organization so these are the some of the examples so i i hope uh, you understood what is the importance of uh, uh, proactive security you have to proactively uh, need to be be available then proactive what is that exactly proactive security proactive security if you have any doubts till now if anybody you can write in chat box see you have taken in a chinese uh, as example apt1 as a example for this you don't know who hacker you even you don't know we don't know whether somebody is observing us by having comment whether we are part of command and control or not that's what we need to continuously find problems such kind of problems or such kind of questions you have to keep yourself so that how do we secure by them sorry so if anything we feel that there is a non legitimate action is going on so why we are saying that so because until that something see generally we won't get any kind of problems because apt cases advanced person threat cases nobody would disturb you they allow you they may secure you also not to so other members will hack in, and not to other hackers can come in the same way how the hackers previous hackers came so that is where they were looking that to secure so that they only can come and go your organization and they only can take anything from their organization so when in the such cases the first step is you need to understand the problems of early such cases and address them and also know your weaknesses so that you will definitely think about that how to protect them and definitely you need to thorough step monitoring for anomalies and be prepared to respond and collectly you have to collect meaningful data and used to it improve it because you may be you may be collecting a lot of information from in a remote organization but actually what you want if that is not defined collecting entire information never works so collecting exactly what you want how do you collect the data that is what you have to concentrate more and you have to simplify that uh, as much as easy way easy pathway so that it can be implemented definitely with respect to security but whatever you have done you need to reevaluate every time or every possible time so that you can continue see of course if you are able to stop if you are able to protect it is always good to share with others the proactive security control should be automated integrated scalable adaptive actionable and intelligent based all positive things i have added here but uh, of course you need to understand that interested or uh, integrated means let's take example if you are collecting a log from a particular thing like a server and not from a and you are not integrated firewall data or you are not integrated router data or not integrated browser data so what is used by taking your log at yourself and you cannot prove that because that log might have deleted by him itself so that is where we need to look into that enabling right from accessing from his client maybe your application might have might be accessing through browser that browser only can be considered uh, what kind of browser is using whether that bro through browser whether he can tweet or tweak whether he can tweak about uh, that particular server or not that also should be known 
so that if that log is coming from there when he is coming to your gateway your firewall your switch and your web server every place if you are taking and every place you are enabling logging what happens that hacker lit, may be a little bit worried that if one he can do that where the vulnerability is there he can delete that log also when he is entering into the system but where he cannot enter routers firewalls because they have already is good security or otherwise decker doesn't have knowledge on those things it would be very difficult for him to attack because the logs would represent him him as an culprit so that you can take an action that is where when you enable logs everywhere this one you cannot do anything so logging adapts so you need to scan as many vulnerabilities vulnerability in the sense not only technical because entire security depends on three people processes and technology ppt model people process technology so these three are very much important and finding the vulnerabilities even you are hosting in a technical control but that is done by an people somebody people, part of people only okay then why he has done why he is uh, not doing for everything is a process so wherever the gap area is there vulnerability is there is a definitely he can do that so vulnerability discovery is very much in, in, important and for that you need to test your own way or you have to establish a test lab so that you can test it itself before hosting anywhere of course if you have finalized a kind of in a surface and doing in a automated vulnerability attack surface discovery manual vulnerability discovery intent one instant vulnerability discovery all this would be part of discovery then you have to do some uh, steps of proactive security like risk assessment so when you are not able to do evaluation by what kind of risks are coming to your organization you cannot estimate what kind of attacks threats would come into the picture so impact analysis is very much important and also how to avoid or how to prevent the risk also should be defined so that you can easily do the mitigation and of course threat analysis must be done and you need to do that uh, various planning for implementing to do the proactive security see it is actually proactive security is nothing but it is the opposite rate of reactive self reactive security is what suppose any incident happens in the organization then only you will be working on otherwise you feel sit that you are very much comfortable but you don't know somebody is stealing the data by spoofing you by spoofing one of the employee so all estimating the features gives you chance to do response planning so basically it does and accuracies also gives a kind of a chance to how to do the your response response planning see these are the parts discovery scoping assessment reporting remediation and training and awareness these are the things are required you need to dis discover yourself of all organization and you have to make what are the important and why they are critical like in a scoping and continuously vulnerability assessment then once you understand uh, report of vulnerability so you will know that what kind of risk initially at least risk identified initially and uh, reporting would be done in case if any critical problem is there you need to resolve immediately you do the remediation of course security is not a one man job security is so everybody's job whoever the part of organization is everybody's responsibility when it is coming to the security so plans are nothing plan is everything there is no need of uh, separate plans a number of plans but planning is everything whether it is a target is an individual or target is in a an organization 
otherwise there is no difference between an individual user so like a discovery means so information gathering how china was gathered in apt1 information of 137 organization 6.4 terabytes data they stole but that company was not able to recognize and somebody they said 4.7 years are stayed in that uh, as in a rogue unit and they were not able to identify scoping is what purpose we are testing what purpose you are assessing what purpose you are editing that scoping and why you are editing and for how many you are editing this is way you need to be do the scoping when it is coming assessment know about your devices so until you know what exactly we have it would be very difficult assess about others if you know everything about yourself so that you know how to avoid them from avoid them from a threat at least you will understand how to protect you will get in an overview of that how to get into how to make secure reporting is that incident reporting incident reporting is because very much important if that would help other organization to act immediately or that would definitely uh, makes a path uh, to others to learn how to report if some report is coming to an organization immediately that the agency which are collecting that report could be given remediation safety tips training and awareness is important as everybody is responsible whatever the post whatever the job whatever the function they are doing in your organization should have training or at least should have awareness what to do what not to do so same steps in the for the organizations also they are not change it but when it is coming to the initial that uh, global network which is uh, global security we are seeing cyber security failure cost is continue increasing as a high profile the basics of the proactive security is always strategic based on military principles of taking the fight to the threats where we need to build threat intelligence threat intelligence is very costly affair even though you are able to build your own sock security operation center but threat intelligence you need to depend on other companies threat intelligence is one of such kind of thing what are the things are coming to that in simple way if i want to tell you that you are hosting an application am i right when application you are hosting you need to make it live and not to disturb by anybody such as hacking doing something so for that what exactly you need to do that you have to always test yourself first and encourage the people to give their comments based on that only you can have some kind of a support so otherwise you need to look into that what are the things are coming to the server each and every action you record it so that you will know that what kind of actions are happening on your server who is trying to disturb your server you can know that and to defend and re- increase resilience against the effects of advanced persistent threats so this is what uh, lot of organizations already started to work towards how to recognize apts and how to stop with a generation deception technology your deception is always required combating the advanced attacks ativo cyber defense magazine 22 was written a beautiful uh, uh, whatever the talk beautiful uh, write up on next generation deception technology and gartner product predicts by 2025 75% of enterprise generated data will be created and processed at the edge routers edge security and saas based applications recording a growth by 33% as compared to the previous years data marques forecast that software defined network market to grow from usd 8.8 billion in 2018 to 2028.9 billion and uh, the last one audit and assessment security a proactive security recording growth uh, uh, 42% is increase 
when compared to previous year so these are the global thing and these are the things we need to look develop such kind of solutions proactive threat monitoring and detection framework enterprises edge security solutions framework that is that uh, gateway security firewalls utms uh, udids ips so multi method attack detection solutions are required and uh, artificial intelligence based stream where to create a threat intelligence because ibm is selling for 4 crores and they are the same allen vault is selling for 8 80 lakhs the difference is only the threat intelligence because ibm might be implementing their devices their things across all where and they were trying to collect the data how users are using how users are facing the problems at different places so that they can estimate what kind of future solutions come and how to cover their solutions with the as part of the features so that is where you need to develop automatic cyber security assessment framework of course intelligence surveillance reconnaissance and threat hunting is part of education and we want to build high end firm cyber solutions by implementing cyber security because of the cost of nature we want to sell it to the only this price with the universities and that one so these are the product features next generation disruption work because you have to disrupt uh, all the communication and understand what they are doing spectra specific threat detection threat hunting and intelligence platform as being 5g is coming sdn is coming you need to proactively be there and uh, how to control the speeds and to have the access with the speeds secure web gateway ddos protection threat protection bot detection zero trust solutions are the some of the solutions at edge level or network uh, firewall level where monitoring the end device unified platform automated workflow a enable c and of course vulnerability and exploit research framework is should be done see how china is doing exploit things across the globe you also need to learn to be not to act but to understand your systems and of course you required your own operating system secure cdn next general indigenous next layer firewalls frame and it is coming to the edit framework based edit abuse based edit technology based edit sectorial based edit so these are the challenges said it's not easy that for designing an attack modeling you required a lot of used data clustering and classification approaches encrypted and encoded traffic and meeting performance and throughout requirements because the traffic is going in the encryption mode so when you doesn't know about the traffic and you may be building a network modeling is very difficult investigating complex tools to reduce false positive false negatives any tool in this world cyber security world if you are buying that will work only work to 60% to 70% only the remaining all false positives false negatives true positives true negatives so these are the things which we need have in a complex tools to identify that when collecting an intelligence at a data across global nodes because ibm is able to collect the, from their devices microsoft able to collect the uh, microsoft operating intelligence details uh, continuously collecting the data so that they can build an anti malware toolkit by themselves assess the vulnerability detection capabilities and the unified network and dashboard you might be using a unified network which is having to four or five uh, instances together but they are uh, apart uh, to various different places that kind of network is established to control your network do you have any doubts so whatever we discussed the solutions and uh, this one it would be very difficult to establish as a student as a faculty within your organization until your organization is having a number of budget budget things 
then only uh, budget is there, then only you can establish it. But however, open source security solutions would be useful, which we will discuss tomorrow. Now coming to that, let's say if you, how to set up your labs for proactive security, whether you have like any firewall solutions or different things, but what purpose you are keeping proactive security only the defense purpose? If the defense purpose and you are depending on a vendor, so there is no guarantee that you will be fully secured. So that you need to do continually some teaming exercises. The teaming exercises, cyber range teams, you have to establish it. See, there are so many platforms are available in the world. Based on budget, if you can put up on 60 lakhs, they will give to 60 lakhs. If you have, if you are ready to put up four cores, they also charge same rule as the per four cores also. That is where the market is there. That market, uh, maybe, is like a you know, volatile market because of the nature of the the domain cybersecurity, which is the daily evaluating, uh, daily evaluation. It's not like an uh, evaluation within a period. So what is the cyber range? Cyber ranges are virtual environments that use actual network equipment as required. Because if you are hosted a server for a small web server, which is required 4 GB, your server may be having 128 GB. For one 4 GB setup uh, system or server is very difficult to, one 4 GB, server, but the remaining 128 GB, like 124 GB out of 128 GB is becoming waste. How do I use this memory in case if I am having a different operating system? Nothing, nothing but a virtual box. You can download it from oracle.com or any virtual uh, box is anyway free, but uh, if you are looking about that some kind of any virtual like whether it is a VMware or anything, that could be that could be utilized. So virtually utilized. They can range from single standalone ranges into the single house or an organization to internet replicating ranges that are. See, I have a taken 128 GB RAM and I hosted 10 servers of my application, 10 different applications in that mission with 128 GB RAM. So wherever that some department is required a developer in Windows that will be enabled in Windows. In other organization, other department is developed in Linux. So we enable Linux without any difficult. So that uh, uh, range, cyber range, you can use it for testing also. So it's actually, the range is nothing but, if the rep, that replica to provide as an on-demand IT infrastructure, end-to-end -end network data storage, security firewall, and point devices, physical, physical, critical, and cloud applications. When IT applications, test equipment, test eco security core tools, and when it is coming to the uses, so it can be used for training. Most of the cyber ranges are using for training only, or otherwise, if you configure some device, what is the impact if you, which you would like to know that you can use cyber range? Simulate accounts, new attacks, simulate new things. Uh, as for the education part or automation part, you can check it. They, they may have support the security, testing and the design for security. And if you want to create proof of concepts that could be possible, application compliance, our application compliance assessment for security reporting is also required. If debugging is the process of removing bugs, then programming is the process of putting bugs into the application. So this sentence I always love. If debugging is the process of removing bugs, then programming is the process of putting bugs into the application. The testing only proves the presence of bugs not the options of them. So that not only test, but you have to enable as it is working in real.
Cyber threats are everywhere. The growing numbers are staggering. Data breaches to individual IT thefts. System outages to vulnerabilities, critical infrastructure. Maybe the previous lectures they were taken. All the things. So what is exactly the point? And everybody lost this. Perfect makes things perfect. That should be the first skill from any university, school, enterprises. Definitely required. So definitely that they will help you to make things perfect on Monday itself. And if that is the good skill, so you should definitely appreciate. Even though. So what is that simulations? What is the cyber sector exercise? A cyber exercise tests the incident response of organization. Simulation means you maybe created a simulated thing, simulated a para. Oh, sorry. Simulate thing, simulate uh, a person. Uh, that is basically you can keep it simulation. Uh, particular system and how system works, real time system work. That would be working as a simulator. But cyber exercise, if an incident happens on a particular thing, the entire process would be done. Why it is required? Why it is important? This is basically the importance is basically to know about if in case cyber incident happens to your organization, how do you prepare by yourself? How do you attack? How do you counter attack on a particular attack? That is what the cyber exercises will tell you. So this, if you are successfully implemented, then you know that your whatever the, your weaknesses, whatever the, your strength is, and how to improve further. So it is also basis on the uh, focus on business impact, and it can be considered as a penetration testing. So is ultimately you are doing in a parallelly doing in a penetration testing for and the people and processes, and it do essentially the same issue finding as a penetration test expert. They aim to find issues in how people work. And not in the technology what they use. So the this is where you major difference between cyber exercise and simulations. Now tabletop exercises is a security incident preparedness activity taking participants through the process of dealing with a, a simulated incident scenario, and providing hands on training for participants that can then highlight flaws in the incident response planning, clarify. Designing about the clarify objective and outcomes, engaging them and learning them. So mostly these are all tabletop exercises with respect to your organization, with respect to your department, could be uh, in this mode design and engage and learn more, so that you will understand all kinds of uh, your problems, your threats, your attacks. So there is an infosec wheel which uh, you need to really develop such kind of team when you are implementing an organization. So that color wheel is nothing but a white color is like an analyst where they will check about the various compliances, logistics management to implement cybersecurity. But when red team is more working on offensive side, that means how to break the things, break the jinx. And uh, Purple team is integrating the defensive and the opposite to red team is always defensive security, the defenders. And the red team is like the breakers. The between blue and red team, the integrating the both the defensive tactics with offensive results. So at the same time, you required green team here enhancing the security automation with the design and code. And orange team is facilitates interaction where the training education should be implemented. Of course, yellow team who is supporting you to uh, develop some code and all architects, the builders. So mainly the developers. So red team, if you see blue team comparison, only having red and blue security teams is not enough, but the people building what is must be defended need to be included. So looking at offensive and defensive security, Ethical hacking, infrastructure protection, exploiting vulnerabilities, damage control, penetration tests, incident response, black box testing. But here, blue team is 
white box sexing. They may do social engineering, but blue team doing threat hunting is the opposite of with respect to threats. Web app scanning, mobile scanning, application scanning, they will do uh, before hosting anything or before eating anything. But blue team you know, is like a defend mode. Once the attack happens, they do the digital forensics. So objectives of team assessment, what is that? See, these are the, again, wheel only and the test information environment because so you are understand uh, like in a test your team's incident response capability. Test the security controls more technical side like a web application firewall, intrusion detection system, prevention system, load balancer, everything is working or not. And test your organization ability to protect your critical assets from real world attack. And discover weakness in your development. That is the one main thing which you are to, uh, looking about that because until understand about your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities, it would be difficult to defend even though offend also. When you are ready, your skills are ready to offend, but actually your system is itself is having vulnerabilities. So whatever, what is the use? So continuously assessing your internal employees by giving awareness and training and understand the impact of a security breach against security test environment. It is a continuous process. And uh, what are the benefits you will get uh, through team exercise? You will quantify the risk factors and you will upgrade security poster and uh, be prepared or know about the gaps just your efficiency. So if you are identifying the vulnerabilities and the difference between high risk or low risk factors, that can be lead to that can be lead to breach and may mitigate them according to the priority. So until you don't know about your vulnerabilities, so it would be able to expect uh, uh, what is the kind of breach you have. Upgrade security posture. The security posture is an, like an entire posturing of your security with respect to your information, data, and the devices. And each one, each component, you need to do some kind of a understanding the risks to pertain to your environment and update security controls as required. You always be prepared for well equipped with that arms that can detect real world threat. Otherwise, you will look into the you also, once you are in the command control system, is one more organization for them. Okay, because if if you are prepared for any worst thing, of course you can deal with it very easy. Any kind of thing it is coming to you. So know about the gaps. Know about the exploitable vulnerabilities that expose your data to the potential attackers and how to learn, learn how hackers combine different methodologies, weaknesses, both small and big to carry as a potential network. Because as a red team, offensive mode as a blue team. So it is like a fighting X between red team and blue team should be evolved as a real time. And continuously that efficiency should be increased by testing your efficiency. What is the team uh, approach team assessment? The red team assessment starts with the conducting the impact assessment of your environment, reconnaissance. So then let's look about that the Chinese people also doing that are the initial, before going that they have done reconnaissance and plus scanning. The same thing could be done here also. I'm looking your, this one. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, there is no questions. So then reconnaissance is uh, how you are doing the same thing uh, you may be doing uh, uh, the Chinese work done uh, for their purpose. You need to do for your organization, your exercises it should be implemented so that the whether the attacks could be a passive or active or physical. The passive are more dangerous. Active you may know immediately. Uh, like they do something on server, server may be getting slower performance and all. But passive, it would be very difficult to find out. So all passive techniques also should be used as part of uh, this planning and preparation. And uh, passive are like social engineering. You may be posting a um, 
uh, like in a picture that you are in Goa and enjoying holidays. So this information, passive information, because you keep it public and, uh, but who is using that information to attack you that you don't know. So that is where finding him is very difficult. Phishing, phishing is also, it's look like uh, your bank uh, and that they will send it a mail to you. So definitely they will also, uh, if you click it and if you give that, uh, you feel that that is as the bank is asking, gone. Snipping, if somebody is collecting the packets while you are part of home and your Wi-Fi access point is enabled and uh, everybody can collect the packets in mode. So when they're doing that, what happens? You don't know who is collecting the packets. Anybody can come to near to your access point, they will collect it. No, the snipping can be done. Wishing, if I'm calling as a city bank that by knowing your credit card uh, data or uh, as a, I'm making myself as a bank employee, mm -hmm. sir, as you have done recently one transaction and I told the transaction what exactly you have done, definitely you will trust me. Then I'll ask that, madam, you don't type uh, your OTP uh, don't share, never share OTP with anybody, but to confirm you about that you are only talking uh, to right person I'm talking, you just uh, uh, make uh, only give through mobile itself, type your mobile. Our system automatically takes, which I cannot also see that, so that uh, we are confirming that you are talking, we are talking right person. This is for your security purpose. But when you type uh, your pin number one, two, three, four, uh, that the thing will uh, see in my mission. So by the time I have stolen your credit card and your PIN number also came. So this can happen in wishing. Spear phishing is the target oriented high end people. Such kind of attacks are uh, very much passive and uh, physical networks is like tailgating, war dialing, rogue access point. So intentionally I leave an USB after visiting your uh, college. Uh, sir, this is my lecture PPT is there. Please copy it in your computer. But along with PPT, I also make in a one embedded file. When you double click and open, see my uh, PPT, there is a one malware sits in my bot uh, will be sits, uh, my cyber army will sit in your computer. Whenever you are connecting the internet and uh, that machine will give a command to me so that I can control your machine very easily. So attack can be in any three major types, the active, passive, and physical. So what is the major difference between penetration testing and red teaming? Red teaming is basically which you are doing, your team only doing on this thing. But however, um, penetration testing is also similar kind of efforts required. Time box for testing is, is brief and time box for testing is extended. I may be giving the time because penetration testing is used to then outside. Red teaming is inside for in a particular purpose and is inside member, so timing is maybe increased. So penetration testing, maybe uh, testers can use the commercial penetration test tool, but uh, red teaming is, is encouraged to think creatively and use anything at hand for testing. Uh, that is where, because Generally, organization cannot afford all tools, uh, but uh, penetration testing could be given to the other organization where they have their licenses. The employees are aware that testing is taking place, but in red teaming, employees are usually not aware that testing is taking place. And penetration testing, testers seek to exploit known vulnerabilities, but red teaming seek to discover new vulnerabilities. And uh, in penetration testing, touch targets are predefined, but in red team are fluid and across cross multiple domains. So systems are tested independently, but systems are tested simultaneously in red teaming. That is what the major difference between penetration testing, red teaming. What is yellow team members? Yellow team members that build and design software systems and integrators that make businesses more efficient. Yellow team is basically the development team. They are the members who develop the applications and they would be a part of business. Application developers, software engineers, and architects fall into this category. Their focus is usually on requirements 
functionality user experience and back end performance a theory or reality yellow team builds it a red team breaks it blue team defends it again yellow team fixes it okay so that is where yellow builds it red breaks it blue complains about it yellow ignores it management hides it it is what generally happens in the organization but what is the outward because we are testing as many as a organization based exercises no so it is required yellow team generally who is developing your applications and red team looks about that where kind of problems are exist in that application and uh, always try to find that however the responsible persons who are implementers they will always depend with the other controls adding network security firewall intrusion detection system such kind of thing uh, if anything you red break by understanding red team so that uh, intimate to the yellow team to fix it so that they will fix it okay so but mostly they were only yellow team never interested to do back again i don't know so if you are in a software developer whatever you thinks and whatever you makes that is the great and everybody should follow that kind of egoism would be there in that but however these red teams blue teams came back because those days only depend team only whatever they gives they have happy early agree accept and uh, use it to some other controls to protect now when red team introduced they used it to get it so i am not saying anything new thing the tester when the test it and the tester says that it is wrong and uh, developer you see the face of you okay so now if you are red blue yellow these are the our primary colors you know rgb r rby these three are there we can create as much as color when red team is uh, like in a offend uh, offensive and blue team is defensive if both qualities are there is the purple and he knows both offensive and defensive strategies similarly blue team is defensive yellow team is the development so they can become as a green team so defenders and defenders and coders are together then they can support they can green team if the same red team and developers definitely they became as a orange team so they can attack and defense cannot do it alone so coders can't do it alone they all need to work together so that is where created red and blue team purple team so facilitate improvements in detection and defense defense sharpen the skills of blue and red team members effective for spot checking so because you are engaging red team blue teams also is problematic so you need to create an a purple team so when yellow team and red team gets definitely orange team how time so inspire coders and architects to be more security conscious and yellow team and blue team is the green team this is one of the best team to be part of security so when it is coming to the white team they are like managers they have uh, their own responsibilities like a business drivers risk strategy governance policy and standards risk identification and profiling process and uh, operational procedures tools and technologies people and organization management all compliance monitoring and reporting everything will be on their word so if you are looking at that time security teams can be part of these teams red team simulates malicious users sending cyber attacks using single vector multi vector and campaigns and more where green team simulates legitimate users and a service the yellow team is basically simulates innocent users like uh, uh, whatever the office bearers office users where doesn't know anything technology so that how this one makes because they are develops applications for them blue team simulates it network operations security operations certified uh, 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 set uh, the computer emergency a computer incident response team forensic users white team is are the managers scenarios instructors manager green team yellow team and red team 
purple team deals with all uh, legal and media communication handled by this so this is what cyber range where all members would be uh, together uh, joined together and uh, having together and makes uh, together to make proactive security as much as strong so for that before uh, you go to that uh, you please download this do purple team self to test the incident response purpose over and over again yes purple teams to validate protect and detect before using red teams to validate respond purple team seeks to understand and uh, fill gap the uh, protect and detect controls and if you look into that nist cyber security framework you type uh, nist cyber security framework in google you will get in a document the document is beautiful document uh, and if you follow all this if you understood all this nist thing you are very good fundamental cyber security fundamentals and you can say the professionals also so if you look into the rep, ac ac across entire thing you need to design such a kind of a platform by yourself say blue team management red team management you require scheduling ttp development attack scenario development team management reporting and of course you required a various uh, ally cloud shell opstack raising learning machine system of course you need to create profit generation threat emulation some of the attacks you need to enable uh, like in a what is that like a denial of service attacks distributed denial of service attacks where uh, on particular target infrastructure so that uh, blue team try to defend them red team used to send such kind of an attacks application servers and when this is a typical architecture for this so if you have any questions so let me take because almost uh, 1540 so that another 5 minutes i can engage if you have any doubts uh, any with respect to any requirements let us know i try to clarify sir one of the candidate has dropped the message in the chat box for the query do we need cyber security insurance is our cyber security insurance policy appropriate to our risk um uh, frankly speaking i don't have experience in this cyber security insurance but if you look about the insurance document you will know that for what type of attacks that insurance which you have done and whether valid for that insurance we need to look into the board this insurance is applicable in general when you are taken necessary security implications otherwise insurance cannot be given to anybody if if that is the case and then in a evaluation the cyber security evaluation and day by day is changing the patterns attacks threats then how do you claim that that is what the bigger problem so insurance is always good if there is a clear understanding between you and insurance company we can go ahead but when if you are not defined the risk see how do you calculate the risk risk one we understand the risk of your data or your computer for again as that risk you have some kind of a set of exercises which you implemented then if you secure insurance it other than that if anything happens after defining the process so that could be insure that insurance will come but in the, any one of them if you are missed like a people process technology anything anybody is doing wrong intentionally like it is a strongly protected with password but that password shared by your company member only whether we will get insurance so these are the challenges are there and it is very new to industry cyber insurance but sometimes what happens no by understanding the your insurance uh, risk if there is no particular uh, there is no particular medicine then only the no particular medicine no particular sorry i am why i am talking medicine because i wanted to quote an exam uh, for example with covid 19 even in the initial days in march april february march there are a lot of insurance companies are came and uh, made even i also did 
in case if i am getting a covid 19 that this much is much 90 lakhs insurance would be there okay so there is no take up and only thing is that if you are staying at home if you are taken the respect to guidelines which government has issued if you have done that only that insurance is valid because of the insurances you are having and you are roaming and you said without using mask and all so insurance you may not get it but that is one type of thing second thing is what even the okay your bad luck you got uh, covid 19 what happens if the hospitals are not allowing in your insurance if you are paying cash only then they are ready to treat otherwise no insurance treatments then what is the use of insurance the same thing is applicable here also when it is coming to the cyber security as per this is my personal view but otherwise you need to go to uh, read document very carefully in what cases this insurance is applicable or not so how to prevent a man in the middle attack so man in the middle attacks are always happens always happens because of spoofing spoofing can be done ip spoofing or arp spoofing such protocol spoofing so that if you are enabling all security implication with respect to your tcp ip protocols you can stop it max spoofing so that if anybody is trying to do max spoofing you the continuously thoroughly check your systems when their system is joined what is the mac and there could be a kind of a log that should be tested if this mac is belongs to this system this ip let's say generally dsp will use it ip address will be given that based on the mac the range of ip addresses this also stops max spoofing or otherwise fixed ip address fixed this one if anything changes from the somebody and some mac is uh, coming with a different mac then definitely you have to get a doubt because so and so ip address should have this mac why it is coming other mac so that kind of testing should be done that kind of rules should be used to stop that spoofing and definitely the man in the middle attacks can be stopped which is more secure ssl or https <clears throat> i think uh, this question is a little bit tricky for me because https is nothing but it uses ssl only back end so of course now tls the updated version tls so which one is more secure ssl or https means yes both because both are same ssl is always good if you say ssh and ssl ssh is secure shell which is basically to connect the remote shell ssl may version 1.0 2.0 3.0 is there tls is there the most one is the tls where you can use uh, tls at this moment which is 128 bit encrypted data so commercially now in india the 128 bit so that to crack 128 bit you required uh, some kind of uh, uh, computing power like in you know, a at least petaflop computer and it almost takes 15 days so to crack any ssl connectivity or http is connectivity password that once you collect the passwords to crack this minimum 15 to 20 days are required by using petaflop computing so that's what everybody recommends change password when critical operation like sales buying banking every two weeks you must change your password so otherwise ssl and http cr http are both are same <laughs> Uh, excuse me sir kindly unmute yourself okay thank you sir so this is what if any further questions are there then uh, i am ready to take
otherwise the afternoon session is very difficult for me and for you also uh, participants if you have any query then you can write in the chat box and thank you very much uh, for uh, your patience and all so tomorrow once again we'll meet for the cyber security open source cyber security tools and some sample exercise which we can do maybe we can collect ssl protocol ssl communication see that whether we can see that uh, these things so with this i am checking out thank you very much thank you sir thank you, thank you for the wonderful session uh, see you tomorrow on, sir thank you thank you so much so participants this was end of uh, the session uh, that is the last talk on, for the today so mr murthy has wonderfully elaborated the concerns related to the essence of the proactive cyber security so what is lacking your queries are lacking so you are expected you are requested to anticipate with your queries with the experts so via that we would be able to deliver our best so kindly anticipate with the possible interactions so tomorrow in the morning dr saurabh kumar from lnm iit jaipur will deliver the expert talk on industry 4.0 and industrial iot and thereafter mr murthy will share the concerns related to the open source tools for the cyber security and thereafter in the afternoon session engineer suresh kumar from mit meerat he will elaborate the concerns related to the good leadership in the covid 19 disruption along with the concern related to the entrepreneurship and cloud computing so today uh, this was the last session and tomorrow we will meet in the morning at 10 am so all of you are requested to join the session 5 minutes prior to the expert uh, expert talk so thank you so much i will share the feedback on the whatsapp group and uh, if anyone want to interact he or she may unmute or drop the message in the chat box if any, uh, anyone want to interact otherwise i will wind up and close this session okay uh, thank you so much and now i close this session uh, yes uh, as responded to share the powerpoint presentations as soon as i receive from the experts i will share you via the whatsapp group if anyone is not utilizing the whatsapp then kindly convey me uh, i will post via the email as well thank you